Step into the heart of one of the world's oldest civilizations as we explore China's history, geography, and culture. From ancient dynasties and landscapes to figures and cuisine, discover the essence of China like never before. Did you know the Great Wall isn't just one wall, but a series of fortifications built over centuries? Join us and uncover more interesting facts about China. Being one of the oldest continuous civilizations in the world, there are thousands of years of history confined within the lands of what is now China. Painted pottery culture was discovered here dating back to the 4th and 5th millennia, which signified a sophisticated early form of culture. Jade amulets, goblets, and numerous vessels marked the early days of pre-dynasty China. The native population also commemorated their dead in complicated rituals, signifying ancestral worship, which is still practiced today in some places in the mainland. Developments in social structure and inventions enabled the establishment of the first dynasty of China. The Shang Dynasty, which ruled from 1600 to 1046 BC. Archaeologists discovered bronze casting dating to this period in Chinese history, a sign of early metalworking derived from Neolithic ceramic technology. Royal burials also became part and parcel of dynasty life, as members of the dynasty were revered by people of all walks of life. The Shang Dynasty was followed by the Zhou Dynasty, which for the most part followed the traditions of those that preceded them. However, it should be noted that the Zhou Dynasty's rule is considered as the longest period in Chinese history, lasting eight centuries. This period gave rise to feudalism in Chinese society. But the last days of the Zhou Dynasty were not that of peace. It was a time of strife, and China was witness to war and conquest between petty kingdoms. This period is known as Zhang Guo, the Warring States period. In this time, social, political, and intellectual developments also sprung up, much like plants on a burnt field. China, after centuries of turmoil, was finally unified by Qin Shi Huangdi, founder of the powerful and significant Qin Empire in 221 BC. By consolidating his power over all the other ruling houses, the ruling house of Qin was able to slowly assimilate them. He created reforms that would change Chinese society forever, abolishing the feudal system, extending the prefecture system, the construction of highways to help facilitate logistics, and the creation of the Great Wall of China. Despite the many reforms, a significant number of laborers still suffered under the rule of the Qin. Many intellectual dissidents were killed under Qin rule, and during the emperor's death, the empire died with him. The centuries that followed after the Qin Empire's fall were characterized by the rise and fall of numerous houses, among them. The Han Dynasty, the so-called Six Dynasties, the Sui Dynasty, the Tang Dynasty, the Song Dynasty, the Ming Dynasty, and the Qing Dynasty. Numerous social developments occurred during this long period of time in Chinese history. It would be very difficult to talk about them in their entirety. The rise of Taoism and Confucianism occurred during these dynastical shifts. Buddhism also crept its way into traditional Chinese lives. The establishment of bureaucracy and bookkeeping to facilitate an easier way to govern. The creation of well-trained armies that weren't just conscripts, but rather seasoned soldiers. All of these occurred during the rule of the different dynasties. It should also be noted that the Mongols were able to establish their own dynasty in 1260, the Yuan dynasty, after defeating the Song dynasty. Defeat after defeat caused the dynasty to flee in 1277. This marked Mongol rule which would last until 1368. The last dynasty, the Qing, would eventually meet its end in 1912, when it was superseded by the Republic of China. The Qing Dynasty, which began in 1644, 
was marked by the entry of foreign powers, notably the British, American, and the French. The intervention of these foreign powers with the dynasty and the country's economy sparked numerous rebellions that were quelled by the much more sophisticated and technologically advanced foreigners. This also helped lead to the downfall of dynastic rule in all of China. However, there is much to be said still about the improvements and reforms made by the dynasty. By this time, market towns expanded all over the country. Despite all the restrictions and inherent issues present in trading with the West, it was still considered a boon by the general populace. Modernization, much like that in Japan during the Edo period, was taking place at a slow pace in the late 19th century. The period preceding the dynasty was a problematic time for China. After the Xinhai Revolution of 1911, China became a republic, and with the sudden shift in political ideology and the disappearance of the dynasty, gave rise to warlords in the 1920s, but also led to the creation of the Kuomintang, the political party of the republic, its first leader being Sun Yat-sen. Mostly caused by drastic reforms and disagreements between the generals of the revolution, numerous Chinese provinces declared their independence, henceforth becoming known as warlord states. Many had their own motives, others were driven by certain ideologies like Marxism and communism. One leader, Chiang Kai-shek, was able to assimilate these other warlords, but in the process also made enemies with the communists, also called the CCP. This led to the Nanjing Decade, where a nationalist government was established. Numerous infrastructure projects were started during this period. The general political climate was shaky at best, but there was a dark cloud looming on the horizon. In 1937, Japan invaded Manchuria in the hope of gaining more natural resources after being embargoed by many Western states. This was a dark time in Chinese history, as it was defined by massacres, bloodshed, and wanton destruction of civilian populations and infrastructure. One such massacre was the one that occurred in Nanjing. It was the first time in a long time where the KMT and the CCP were able to fight together, or at least against, the Japanese occupiers. By 1945, after the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Japanese surrendered and with that, Chinese victory was assured. But the war would not stop there. The civil war that happened from 1945 to 1949 was an ideological war between the nationalist Kuomintang and the CCP. It was initially a war for territory, where both parties consolidated their forces to acquire as much land as possible. The nationalists were assisted by the United States. Manchuria was a significant target of both parties as it had a population of 40 million people. This period gave rise to leaders such as Mao Zedong. Millions of Chinese workers volunteered for the People's Liberation Army, and by 1948, they already outnumbered the Nationalist Army. The war didn't only take a toll on the population, the economy was also ruined by years of continuous conflict. By 1949, the Communists were able to defeat the Nationalists, ending a bloody war for the right to rule the entirety of China. The Chinese Communist Party, after defeating the Nationalists in 1949, established the People's Republic of China. With Marxist ideology at its core, it created a social movement with the backing of the worker populace, ridding the country of the elites that used to permeate Chinese society. However, creating a new country through a social movement was not as easy as it seemed. Multiple droughts killed millions of Chinese civilians. The purging of dissidents also occurred, and from time to time, mass protests against the ruling party occurred. One such protest was the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests. All in all, 
the CCP managed to assimilate and coordinate a mass movement that indoctrinated the majority of the population towards the ideology of the CCP. And now, in the 21st century, China has become one of the world's leading economies and one of the, if not, the fastest growing ones. China is one of the leading agricultural countries in the world. With a GDP of $17 trillion, it is also the second largest economy. Agricultural products include maize, rice, vegetables, wheat, sugarcane, potatoes, cucumbers, tomatoes, watermelons, sweet potatoes. Having such a large land area, China is also host to multiple industries, including but not limited to mining and ore processing, iron, steel, aluminum, and other metals, coal, machine building, armaments, textiles and apparel, petroleum, cement, chemicals, fertilizer, consumer products including footwear, toys and electronics, food processing, transportation equipment including automobiles, rail cars and locomotives, ships, aircraft, telecommunications equipment, commercial space launch vehicles and satellites. It is also the leading country in gross value of production output of all the things mentioned. The Chinese flag is made up of one big star and four smaller stars and on a red background. The red background signifies the revolution. The stars symbolize the unity of the Chinese people and the big star represents the unity as being centered. The one being centered on, the big star, is the symbol for the CCP. Thus, the Chinese people are united by the CCP. China is the fourth largest country in the world behind Russia, Canada, and the United States with a total land mass of 9 million square kilometers, or 6 million square miles. The capital of China is Beijing. It shares its borders with Afghanistan, Bhutan, India, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Laos, Mongolia, Myanmar, Nepal, North Korea, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan, and Vietnam. Being such a large country has its perks when it comes to natural landscapes. From rivers to mountains to deserts, China has it all. From the incredible rock formations to foggy forests, it is easy to be mesmerized by what the country has to offer. The Yangtze River is one such feature. China's topography is divided into five different physical macro regions, and in these regions live different flora and fauna. Pandas are one such type of endemic species from China. Bamboo, one of the most famous types of plants, also originates from China. China's climate is extremely diverse for being such a big country. But the average high temperature for the country is at 19 degrees Celsius, or 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and low temperature numbering at 8 degrees Celsius, or 47 degrees Fahrenheit. China is the second most populous country in the world, with a population of roughly 1.4 billion. 91% of the population is Han Chinese, with the rest being ethnic minorities. The median age is 39 years old and a male-to-female ratio of 105 males to 100 females. The main language in China is Mandarin Chinese, also known as Putonghua, however there also exists other languages. The majority of similar Chinese languages are lumped into what is called Hanyu languages. Cantonese Chinese also exists, as do many others. Having Muslim settlers in the far west of the country, China is also home to a population of Turkic speakers. There exists even Mongol dialects within the Chinese population. But of course, discovering a country wouldn't be complete without discovering its food. Here are a few dishes from China that are considered one of the most famous ones in the world. Sweet and sour pork, a dish that is made from pork stir-fried in sweet and sour sauce. Peking roast duck, a common Ming dynasty delicacy. Dim sum, a Cantonese collection of stuffed dumplings, rolls, cakes, and meat. 
Jajangmian, a fried noodle dish topped with Jajang sauce. Who can ever forget the people of China? Here are some of them. Oh, for history buffs, who could forget Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China? And how about world-renowned Yao Ming, the basketball player famous for his height? Arguably one of the most famous Chinese person of all time, Confucius, the philosopher renowned for being the inspiration for Confucianism. Xi Jinping, the current president of China since 2013. And finally, Jackie Chan, the famous actor and stuntman. If you enjoyed this video on China, you'll love this next one.